What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week, we're gonna be making a pair of keys. So, let's just get started. So there are a lot of different ways we could approach creating these keys. But the first thing that jumped out to me was creating a plane. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go create a plane. I can drag down all of those divisions and I can start scaling out the size of my key. And then I can start adding some edge loops and I can start creating some teeth on my key and start giving it some shape. Now a really quick and easy way would just be importing an image plane and then you can just trace around an actual key. However, in this case, I thought it'd be fun just kind of winging it and creating it along the way. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So for this week's model, I got a ton of inspiration from a great artist named Ian Vandermeen. Now I may be pronouncing your name wrong, so sorry if I am, but I saw your great piece of key art model on ArtStation and I got a ton of inspiration and I thought it'd just be fun to recreate my own pair of keys. Now there are so many different keys out there, it was really difficult to choose what I wanted to add on this specific keys. Now my personal keys aren't that exciting, so I wanted to kind of create something else that wasn't my own. So I use his art as a ton of inspiration and reference, and I also use just other various keys on Google Images. So for example, I'm a big car fan and I love the Nissan Skyline, the R34, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to add an old GTR key in there as well. As well as a few others similar to some that I have on my keys and just other ones I found on Google. Also for this video, it's gonna be mostly just a time lapse, but I will be jumping in here and there to explain a few of the small things I'm doing. And I also decided to add in the whole UV process. I know a few of you were interested in seeing that. And I will also have a slower pace video available on my Patreon for anyone that's interested. Once I have all of those edge loops in place and I roughly have this shape blocked out, I can go ahead and select whatever faces I would like and I can extrude them upwards to give it some depth. And then just like that, we simply have one side of a key. And then afterwards, all I have to do is duplicate it over to create the other side. Now, if you were looking for a lower poly key, you could honestly just leave it like this. However, I'm looking to create something a little bit more photorealistic that has higher polys. So what we're gonna start doing is adding some edge loops so we can help support those hard edges on my key. That way, when I hit three on my keyboard and smooth it out, it's gonna help retain its shape. So let's just continue playing around with these vertices until I get it into a shape that I'm happy with.
All right, and just like that, our first key shape is finished. So next up, just creating the very top of the key. So to do this, I'm gonna start off with a cube and we can start blocking the shape out. Now I am modeling this first key off of a small bike lock key that I have. So it's just a little plastic piece with two little holes on the top. So that's what we're basically gonna try to do. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did to the first part of this key. We're gonna create one side and then once that's finished, I can just duplicate it for the other. So let's just start blocking the shape out.
All right, and just like that, we have our very first key finished. So for the next little bit of this video, I'm just gonna speed it up because I just repeat this exact same process over and over again for all of the other keys in my scene. So let's go ahead and start blocking those shapes out and we can create some other keys.
All right, and just like that, all of our main keys are finished. Now I'm gonna go in afterwards and change the scale of some of these keys, but for now, we're just gonna move on to our next key, which is the GTR key. Now this one's modeled off of one of my favorite cars. I wish this key was on my keychain, but unfortunately it's not yet. Now because this is modeled off of a specific model or shape of a key, I probably should have just imported an image plane and just traced it around the actual size. That way it just would have been more accurate to its true shape and dimensions. However, like most of my videos, I'm just gonna wing it along the way and just use a couple of different images like this one that I found on Google. So let's just continue blocking this shape out and then we can create our last key for our keychain.
All right, so next up is just creating the GTR text that's on the key. Now, because it's such a big bump, I didn't just want to do this with the texture. I actually wanted to create this with geometry, but unfortunately I don't have that actual Nissan GTR font. So I thought the quickest way to do this would just be finding a GTR image logo of the font on Google. And then I can just bring that into Maya and just convert the texture to geometry. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start off by creating a small plane Then I can go up to modify, go down to convert and go to texture to geometry. I just have to link it up with that downloaded image I got off of Google and then it'll just create some geometry from that shape. Then all I have to do afterwards is go in, delete all of those other faces that are around the text and then I can just extrude that text upwards to create some depth for those letters. Now, to be honest, if I was to go back and fix up a few things, this is definitely one of the things I would probably spend a little bit more time on. This was the quickest and probably the sloppiest way that I could produce this text. As you see, afterwards I have to go in and clean things up a lot by just merging some of those vertices and deleting some of those unnecessary edges. But to be honest, it's so small in my scene, I didn't think it'd be a problem. So like I mentioned earlier, after converting this image to geometry, it created a lot of unnecessary edges and vertices. And I want to add a nice bevel around these edges and I know that it's going to be a pain with all of these extra vertices. So what we're going to do is go in and start cleaning this thing up. Now I just go in very quickly and clean this up by just merging some of those vertices and deleting some of those unnecessary edges. However, you could spend a lot more time on this shape and you can get it looking a lot better than I did. So let's just go in and start cleaning things up a little bit and then we can add a nice small bevel to those edges. Alright, and just like that, our GTR key is finished. So next up was adding something else to our keychain. I wanted to change it up and not add another key. I wanted to create some sort of other small object. And the first thing that came to mind was an Apple AirTag. So I quickly jumped onto Google Images, just Googled Apple AirTag, and I started blocking the shape out. Now unfortunately, I stopped recording my camera, and I blame my dog. However, luckily, I quickly noticed I wasn't recording, and I started recording the video again. So we're just going to jump ahead a little bit to when all of those main shapes were blocked out and it was very straightforward. It was actually very similar to how I did those key shapes. I just started with a cylinder and extruded some of those faces and then I just beveled some of those edges. And then for the air tag itself, it's just a simple sphere that I squished down nice and thin. So let's just continue on and we can wrap up this Apple air tag.
All right, and just like that, our Apple AirTag is finished. So next up, I just thought it'd be fun to add a small little bottle opener on the keychain as well. So simply, we're just gonna start off with this cube and we can start extruding one of those edges to give it some shape. All right, and just like that, our small bottle opener is finished. So next up is creating some sort of little pendant or image. I want to create something more fun that we could add onto our keychain. So I quickly jumped onto Google, and to be honest, it took me quite some time to find an image that I can use. But in the Creative Commons free to use images, I finally came across this really funny small cat image. And I thought this would be great to add as some sort of little pendant or little keychain image thing. So I thought the quickest way to do this would just be importing an image plane, and then I can start just blocking a shape out around that image. That way later on in Substance Painter, we can very quickly and easily just stamp on the image around our shape. Since it's blocked out around that image, it should hopefully all line up correctly. So let's start blocking this shape out.
All right, so next up is creating a small little chain for this small cat pendant thing. Now, if I was to come back and fix anything on this model, this is probably the one main shape I would redo. I didn't even look at any Google reference images and I probably should have here. I just kind of threw together a small shape that we could use as a simple chain. And to do this, I just created a small little torus and then made it four-sided. And then under the deform tab, under non-linear, I chose the twist option and then I can add a small little twist effect to this piece of geometry. This is just gonna twist my shape so it's nice and curved. That way I can duplicate it along itself and it looks like they're all kind of linked up as a little chain object. Now, like I said, if I can come back and fix anything, it would definitely be this shape. It still bugs me that I didn't do this shape properly, but it's so small in my scene. That's why I just wanted to do something very quickly so we can move on to some more fun and exciting things. All right, so last but not least is just creating that small little ring that all of these keys and objects are hung onto. So originally I was just gonna reuse that exact same ring that we use on our cat pendant, but after jumping on Google really quickly, I thought a more traditional or universally used ring shape would work better for this object. So I noticed how a lot of these key rings are basically rounded on one side and flat on the other. So that's what we're gonna try to do with this one. So what I decided to do was start off with a torus. I could scale that nice and small depending on how thick I want this ring shape to be. And then I can just chop it in half to create that flat side of this shape. So then I just have to duplicate it and flip it around so there's two rings that are both touching on the flat side. And then I just have to delete some of those faces, merge these two objects together, and then I can bridge together two of those edges so I can connect these two rings together. So let's go ahead and start blocking out this last ring shape for our keys.
and just like that, our small keyring is finished. So really quickly before we moved on to the UVs, I thought it'd be fun to add one extra small detail, just like a more personal little touch to this object. So I thought it'd be fun to duplicate that same small ring we created earlier, and I could just wrap a small piece of tape around it. But really quickly before we add the tape, I'm just gonna change how these teeth look on the key so they're not identical to one another. I don't wanna have two of the exact same key, I want it to look like they're two similar keys that are just cut differently. And that's exactly why you're using the tape, so you can distinguish the difference from one another. So we're just going to zoom in and move around some of these vertices so it looks different than the first key we created. So we're going to create a small little plane as our piece of tape, and then we can start extruding it to wrap around our key. So let's go ahead and just quickly block out this last shape. Alright, so all of our objects are modeled. Next up is just doing all of those UVs. So really quickly, before we do that, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So we're just going to select all of the objects, delete all of the history. I can go through the outliner and delete all of the empty folders and all of the things we don't need. And then I can also just start grouping all of these shapes and giving them some names. All right, so we're gonna start off with our very first key. So really quickly before we UV it, I just wanna make sure that the shape is all finalized and I'm happy with how it's looking. So I'm basically just gonna clean up the model a little bit. So I'm just gonna make sure there's no weird artifacts on the faces. I can delete all of those back faces that we don't need that go into the top piece of the key. And I can also just remove any unnecessary edge loops that produce from smoothing out the object. And I also forgot to add a few edge loops that help support some of those hard edges so we can quickly go finish up the shape and then we can start UVing. Alright, so now that our key shape is finally looking good, we can go ahead and start the UVing process. So we're going to quickly open up our UV editor and I can go ahead and delete history, freeze transformations, and center pivot. And then I can go up to my UV tab and do a camera base projection so I can remove all of the cuts on my model. And then using the 3D cut and sew UV tool, I can start creating my own cuts. So I end up just creating one cut right along the side and that way I can unfold it and I have two sides to my key. However, I quickly just experiment with a few things. I try making a few extra cuts thinking I may have some better results. However, I just revert it quickly and go back to that original cut that I do right down the middle. And just to help with the tiny bit of stretching I was having at the very tip of the key, I just make one little cut. That way when I unfold it using Control U and lay it out using Control L, and I turn on that checkerboard pattern, I get no weird stretches and the key looks good. Thank you. 
All right, and just like that, our bottom part of our key is UV'd, so let's do the exact same process now to the top. So once again, starting off with a camera-based projection to remove all of those cuts, and then using the 3D Cut and Sew UV tool, I can go ahead and start creating my own cuts on the model wherever I want them. And once again, very similar to how we did the first one, I'm just gonna create one cut right down the middle on the side. That way when I unfold it, I have two sides, basically two UV shells to this shape. All right, so now that I have both of these shapes of this key UV'd, I can go ahead and select this key group and I can select all of those UV shells and go Control L to lay them out. I'm just gonna start positioning these shells so they fit nicely together and then I can basically just move them off to the side and start UVing the next key. But once again, just by using the exact same process by doing a camera-based projection to remove the cuts and then going in with the 3D Cut and Sew UV tool to create my own wherever I want them. So let's go ahead and start UVing the rest of these objects. Oh,
All right, and as you can see, I decided to group all of these objects up into two main groups. Basically one group for the keys and one group for all of the objects. And what I'm gonna do is assign a different material to both of these groups. That way later on in Substance Painter, I will have two different texture sets, one for the keys and one for all of the objects. So now that we have all of those UVs finished, we can go ahead and start positioning these keys together. Now, originally I started positioning these keys in one certain way. I didn't really know where I wanted these keys to be on this whole keychain. So I started just kind of throwing them all together. However, at the very end, I ended up just changing things up and moving a few of them around. Alright, and just like that, our keychain is finished and ready to texture. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I forgot to add those materials, so really quickly I'm going to add a material to each one of those folders, one for the keys and one for all of the items, and then we can export it and jump into Substance Painter to start texturing. Alright, so now in Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. And if everything's looking good, we can go over to our texture set settings, scroll down to Bake Mesh Maps, choose your output size, I chose 4K, and make sure to check on that Use Low Poly Mesh as High Poly Mesh. Now, I really quickly thought that two of those small keys were sharing the same UV space, so I just went down to Ambient Occlusion and changed the Self Occlusion to Only Mesh Name. However, they actually weren't, so the step really isn't necessary. And once that's all set up, you can go ahead and bake out your textures. So I thought we'd start at the very top of our texture set list and start with the items group. Now I'm not going to explain the whole texturing process, I will jump in here and there to explain a few of the things, but most of this is just going to be a time lapse. So what I like to do is basically start filling in all of those empty spaces first, and then I can come back and start refining them afterwards. I always find it's easier to see how those materials are supposed to look when all of the other materials are filled in around it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start filling in all of these empty spaces and then I can start refining those materials once they're all filled in. So I'm going to go over to the Smart Materials tab and start dragging on different Smart Materials so I can start filling in some of these objects. And then I can start tweaking some of those colors and settings to make it look more accurate to what I had in mind.
So really quickly here, when I was texturing this Apple AirTag, I noticed in the reference photo I was following online, it had some sort of stitching effect on the very bottom. I thought it looked cool and I wanted to recreate it, so I decided to use that procedural stitching brush that comes with Substance Painter, and I could just basically paint on a stitching effect. Now the problem was, I was using my keyboard and mouse, and I don't know if I just drank too many coffees that day, but I was very jittery and I could honestly, for the life of me, not draw a smooth line. So I just really quickly jumped onto my tablet and I drew on that line. Now don't get me wrong, it still wasn't perfect, but like I said, I think I just drank too many coffees and I didn't want to just obsess over getting this line perfect, so I got it straight enough and I decided to go with that. So when it came time to add this little Apple logo onto my small AirTag, I just quickly jumped into Photoshop and created my own that was similar to the one that Apple uses. Thank you. 
All right, so that's basically everything. That is the whole texturing, UVing, and modeling process that I did to create this small little pair of keys. Now I spent the next little bit just jumping in and out of the renderer and the editor, just making small tweaks and changes to the materials. To be honest, I think this is the most important part of the whole texturing process is the end when you make those final adjustments. So I just spent some time just tweaking things until I got them a little closer to what I had in mind. Now I will be also throwing the same video up on my Patreon page, but at a much slower pace. So if you're interested in checking that out, check out the link that's in the description below. It's also a great way to support the channel as well as get access to additional content. And really quickly, I just want to give a really big thank you to all of my subscribers, my Patreons, and everyone that has helped support the channel. I really can't thank you guys enough. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. I think something like 60% of you are not even subscribed, so if you want to share some love, hit that subscribe button and it would really help me out a lot. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's video. If you guys liked the video, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next one.